I'm recording. Fantastic. Great job. Great job. <laughs> Sarah says, some things I'm down for, this is not one of them. Hashtag scaredy cat. <laughs> uh, Sarah, you'd be fine. It the, 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 the doll is in a glass enclosure that's been blessed twice a month by a priest. It can't be opened. She can't get out. You'll be safe. Just don't taunt the doll. Anyway, um, three weeks ago was uh, Scares at Care. And went down. Uh, my awesome friend April and her mom rolled that room. Uh, hit, 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 first day with the new lips. Rode down with me. And uh, when I got down there, it was kind of interesting. Because I don't know if I told you. I get to the hotel. And the hotel's loaded with, with government vehicles. Um, so I, I said, this is a little interesting. We go into the hotel. I see all these guys in suits with earpieces and guns. I'm like, oh, oh great. Somebody going to attack the hotel. What the hell's going on? So I check in. I go down to the coffee shop. And I ask the lady. I'm like, hey, is this not for nothing? Oh, it's what all the guys with guns. And she says, oh, they're Secret Service. I'm like, oh, okay. She says, yeah, the president's coming here tomorrow. <laughs> I said, oh, coming here? And she says, well, I don't think he's coming here to the hotel, but he's going to be in Jamestown for a speech, and then he's coming to Williamsburg. So I was like, oh, okay. And uh, it was very interesting. I, I actually got to talk to one of the Secret Service agents. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm from up in Connecticut, and don't get to see the president too often. Is this open to the public? And he says, yeah, but it's sold out. I said, oh, so there's no way. And he says, well, you, you can go down to Jamestown and park along a street somewhere. He says, obviously, you're not going to get too close. I'm like, so basically what you're telling me is don't waste my time. And he, he kind of laughed. He says, yeah. So it's up to you. I mean, you may catch a glimpse, but that's going to be about it. So I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Scares that care in the house. What's up, Trisha? So, scares that care went off without a hitch. It was absolutely amazing. We were able to do not one, but two check presentations. Um, both of them were surprises. Neither, neither recipient knew they were receiving their check. Uh, so we were able to give our breast cancer survivor her check. And in the ultimate surprise, um, one of our own, uh, we were able to uh, present the sick child check. And uh, it was very emotional. There were a lot of tears in the audience. And um, it was it was just, you got to be there to see it, to understand what we do. Um, and the, the appreciation that these people have for what we do. And uh, the celebrities that we have, and some of them say, don't call me a celebrity. We're the real celebrities for fighting monsters. But um, John Anderson, John Anderson, great guy. Um, he's been in, oh, God, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He was in um, Avengers Endgame and the one before it. That was the one before it. Infinity? In Infinity. Or Infinity War. Infinity War and... Uh, the whole audience was in tears. Yeah, they were. It was, it was just amazing. Um, and one thing that just... I don't even... I, I can't even describe how much it meant to me. Now, all of our, our listeners and everybody know what my co-host Gina has been going through. And... So I called her up and I said, hey, um, I just asked her if she would mind coming down and riding back up with me because I didn't want to drive back up alone. And she says, well, she says, I'd like to come down for the whole thing. And I said, all right, are you going to be able to do it? And she said, sure. So being a horror convention, I, I, let me take that back. It's not a horror convention. It's the horror genre, but it's a charity event. And um, I, I'm not going to lie. I was a little leery about it at first. But I said, okay. So she came down, and uh, I talked to some of our board directors, uh, some of which were former police officers and whatnot. 
and I explained the whole situation, and they were all like, yeah, absolutely. The scares that, fair, scares that Care family took her under their wing so much and gave her what she needed. They, she had a weekend that she'll remember forever. She had a blast. Um, it was, it, I mean, it was amazing to see. I cannot thank them enough for what they did for Gina. It was just absolutely incredible. And now uh, Gina's going to be coming every year. Um, she's going to be bringing uh, her boyfriend and probably Sarah Beer and one or two other people. And it's going to be a great time. We will have a blast. And the other thing that I was just amazed with is, um, oh, my God, now I'm having a brain fart. Um, Sarah Butler. Sarah Butler, beautiful girl. Uh, she was in the movie I Spit on Your Grave, which if you haven't seen the movie I Spit on Your Grave, is about a girl who goes off into the woods way out in the middle of nowhere to, to write a book, and uh, she's brutally attacked by a gang of scumbags. And it's one of the most brutal, most horrific scenes I've ever seen in any movie. It actually made me physically ill when I watched it. And people have come to her thanking her, saying that she's inspired them to not so much fight back against their attackers, but to live vicariously through her as she fights back against her attackers. And um, her and Gina hit it off. They became like best friends. And it was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it, it doesn't matter what happened. We, you know, what, what DJ J. Smith, Joe Smith did to her um, is absolutely disgusting. Uh, but she's rising above. She's overcoming. She's starting to get back to herself now. And... Uh, hopefully she can move on with her life and put all this behind her eventually. Chris Cody says he played in a golf tournament yesterday, a, a charity golf tournament. Did you win? I mean, winning's not every. Winning isn't everything. Winning is everything. But losing sucks. No. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Chris. Did you win? He had fun. I saw his post up there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, having fun is good. Winning is even better. Yeah. Winning is fantastic. Yep. Sarah says, my Gina is a fighter. Yes, she is. Absolutely. 100%. So, um, yeah, we are able to uh, give our check presentations at Kevin Ollie. Kevin Ollie's tournament, or you played with Kevin Ollie? Both check presentations went out. It's a great time. And he won. <laughs> Chris did win. He took first. Hell yeah. Way to go, buddy. Good job, Chris. So we've already started getting our uh, our recipients for next year. And now it's time to uh, start fighting real monsters and doing some. I want to run a fundraiser for Scares That Care up here. I just don't know what I want to do yet. Well, let me know. I'll yeah. help you produce that. Absolutely. I was thinking something around Halloween, but it's kind of. Kind of too late to do anything for Halloween this year. Not really. We have plenty of time. Yeah. You have a whole month. Yeah, but I got to work. I'm working that whole week. Well, then I guess it's not going to happen. <laughs> That's what I said. His tournament. Oh, nice. Very nice. Kevin Ollie's tournament was for kids with disabilities that want to play sports. Awesome. That's outstanding. Good for you, Chris. Thanks yes. for doing that. And congratulations on winning. So, we also had our Mohegan Wigwam Pow Wow Festival this past weekend. And uh, Simone! Hey, hey, Simone's with us. I miss you, too. Hi, Callie. Hey. <laughs> Congratulations, Simone. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Beautiful Absolutely. baby. Absolutely. You got to bring her in one of these days to say hi. Karaoke. Not the karaoke. Yes, the karaoke. Can't wait for you to come back. 
And then we'll make Randy make those buffalo uh, mozzarella sticks I've been waiting on. The buffalo mozzarella sticks. Here yeah, we celebration. go. <laughs> celebration. Celebration. Awesome. Chris says he can help out, too. And that would be great. So, yep, the wigwam, powwow, whatever you want to call it. We call it the wigwam festival, but it's powwow. Um, it, it went great. From what I could see, I worked the front gate. And um, Saturday, I mean, it was like a tale of two days. Saturday, it downpoured for two and a half hours. Yeah. And I, did you see the picture I posted? It has ruined a lot of my plans that day. And Simone likes the buffalo cauliflower, see? Uh, the cali- it's all right. It's healthier, but yeah. I haven't tried the buffalo mozzarella sticks yet, so I'm missing out. So if you saw the, the, the picture that I posted from the powwow, the Mothville police officer, I'm not going to mention Bruce's name. You just said his name. And Bob from Protective Services, they're all under the tent, nice and dry. While I'm out there, I soak through everything, direct in traffic. Then the next day, it, w- it was gorgeous. It, it really didn't feel that hot. Um, however, Sunday night, I ended up with uh, heat exhaustion and dehydration, and um, that was not good. I'm finally starting to get my voice back. Um, the shaking has stopped. It was, man, I tell you, I thought I was drinking enough water, but holy crap. The cramping, every muscle in my body was cramping. It sucked. You got to drink water, man. I was. I was drinking water all water. day. Get rid of that. What are you drinking right now? Iced coffee? Yeah. Get rid of that. That's, That's so bad for you. That's like 2,000 calories right there. That huge ass cup of yours. It's horrible. I run on Duncan. Horrible. Mm. Horrible. Next time I have to do a ghost hunt with you and the Ghostbusters, Virginia Colonial Ghostbusters. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I know, Trish. Between <laughs> between the powwow, the heat, and the Diamond Dallas Page Yoga, which, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have started DDP Yoga. And I will never ever make fun of anybody for doing yoga again. Oh, my God. I am so glad I have a support group on this because holy crap. Is that beneficial? Oh, yeah. I, I've Absolutely. been thinking about doing yoga. I'm just trying to get all my stuff in there. Absolutely. Get my schedule I together. mean, one week and you can feel the difference. Yeah. Yep. There's this lady I know that she does yoga. Actually, she's doing it tonight, 730. She's been trying to get me to join. I just haven't had time to do that yet. So, But it's something of interest, so I probably will just join her class. Oh yeah, it gets it gets very intense, very intense. I mean, when you when you first do it, you're you're gonna use muscles that you haven't used in years, mm-hmm. and you're gonna feel it. It's, you're gonna want to give up, but don't give up. You want to just keep pushing forward, and uh, yeah, it's it's amazing, absolutely amazing. So yeah, I think it was between that and the uh, and the work in the powwow. And like I said, I don't understand it because I was drinking water all day. And um, the, the heat exhaustion, just it didn't hit me until I got home. Because I worked from 8 a.m. until I think 7, 6.30, quarter of 7 I left. And um, I got sunburned. What? Keith, what? I'm in the camera. <laughs> I'm dipping, dipping. He's in the camera. I haven't seen him move from the camera. Yeah, he's crazy over there. But, oh, my God, the, every muscle in your body cramping. It was horrible. Absolutely horrible. And I if could, you drink more water, you'd be fine. I drank water all day. Drink That's all I a drank. gallon. Chris drinks a lot of water. He's still on there, right? Chris Cody? Uh-huh. He, he drinks a lot of water. I drink he a drinks lot of water, a lot of water, water. Um, You can ask any of the guys from Lansdowne. I, um, I'll drink about a half a case of water a night. Yeah. Well, you know. That's nothing. Half a case of water. I drink like a gallon That's of water just while I'm, I'm sitting there for four hours that night. I drink at least 10 of those little 12 ounces. That's what I'm saying. I drink about a half a case of that, which is at least 12 plus yeah. bottles. Yeah. So, yeah, but other than that, it seemed like the uh, the powwow went off good. Yeah, I saw some pictures of that, too. It looked pretty awesome. No issues, which was absolutely amazing. Every year we have an issue. This year there were no issues. That's good. That is good. Mm-hmm. 
So apparently, I was going to talk about active shooters the other day, and now we got breaking news that there may there may be one going on right now at the University of Louisiana. Really? Someone just commented that downward dog is JP's favorite position. Thank you. Oh my God, down dog sucks. But then when you got to walk the dog is even worse. <laughs> Anybody that's doing DDP yoga knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Broken table, forget it. <laughs> Jim, well, I, I, I have triage. <laughs> Oh, it was John Rainey that said downward dog is your favorite position. Yeah. John's a <laughs> hater. I'm sorry, John. John's a hater. He's a hater. John's a hater. I bet you he's, he's a a hater. Do, I bet you he does yoga better than you. He probably does. I don't know. I haven't done yoga, so mm. if I want to do yoga, I'm pretty sure I'd do the best yoga ever. I just have to want to do it to do the best of it. Well, you got to want to do it. It's, it's like anything. Yep. You got to want to do it. You know, push yourself to where you would normally stop and then beyond. John says never. Hates. John is, uh, John's a little scared about this, uh, this fantasy football we got going into at Lansdowne. Oh, yeah. He's nervous. He knows he's going to lose. He's playing with the big boys, and, uh, he's scared. He's, he's scared. Hmm. He's absolutely scared. So it sounds like things have been going well for you over there, though. You got on that nice vacation. Well, took some <laughs> weeks off from here. I wouldn't call it a vacation, but yeah, it went well, very well. Yeah. Now, in contrast, while I was away, um, I heard a giant tornado came through and, like, sucked you into it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that shit sucked. Can we say shit? No. Shit. No, it was horrible. Did, did you, you know some of it I told you? Mm -hmm. Holy crap, man. I don't even think I deserved it, but I guess I did. I don't even know. <laughs> like, I feel like I I didn't deserve anything that happened, but it all happened in one week. One week. Before you go, Randy says I yoga myself twice a day. Well, why don't you just make us some mozzarella sticks? John should be afraid of our fantasy football. Amen. That's right. He's playing with the big boys. All right. So Yo. you got laid off. Oh, so hold up, hold up. I'll, I'll do it. So it Sunday, so this was three weeks ago. On Sunday, or Saturday, Saturday, I did this very important party that I DJed. Then an hour left in it, I fried my DJ mixer, and I didn't have a backup. So it was pretty embarrassing that I couldn't continue. The people were really cool about it. Um, that's why I like my job, because a lot of the people that I do business with, or I meet, they're all always laid back. So I thought that was a big deal. And then on that Monday, I ended up just breaking up with my girlfriend. And we're not going to get too much into that because I don't want to I don't want to talk too much about that anymore cuz I'm pretty much over it. At the moment though, it was it was bad. So right, so this girl that I loved just realized it was not going to work out. We went through some stuff and then my mixer was dead. So I'm like, "Oh my god, life sucks." This is horrible. Like, felt like the lowest point of my life. And I was like, I don't even know how the hell this could get any worse. So then, uh, that Wednesday, my car blows up. And that it's totally dead. Totally dead. I was driving for an important meeting on this event that I'm producing. And literally, the exit before, the car just died. I blew the radiator, the timing belt. And all the coolant shot out everywhere. All the oil shot out. My head gasket, it was done. So now I'm at the point where I got no mixer, which that doesn't even matter at this point because I already bought a new mixer. No girlfriend, and I was still dealing with like the emotional aspects of that. And then I my car died, right? So I'm like, all right, holy shit, right? So then guess what happens on Thursday? So Thursday, I'm at work, and my boss told me pretty much I was getting laid off. And then they said that I had to work for another week. Another week after they just laid me off. And that was at 10 o'clock in the morning when they laid me off. And I had to stay there until 4. <laughs> I literally swore at her and was like, are you effing kidding me? And she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And I was like, 
you know, I'm not even mad at you. It's just, I don't understand how life is going right now. And she's like, what do you mean? And then I told her, and she's like, holy shit. She's like, I'm so sorry that I had to be the one to tell you that you're losing your position. So I didn't get fired. I got laid off because they decided to close my office. That's local, which makes sense because I knew this job. It was a government job, and it was easy. And I knew eventually I was going to lose it, but I've only been there for a year. And it was, like, really, really easy, laid back. And I knew eventually it was going to go away. But I didn't know it was going to go away that day after all this other crap. So I was pretty, pretty, uh, you know, all jokes aside, I was feeling pretty low. That was, like, really the lowest point of my life. So then I didn't have a car. And then I had, like, a million gigs that we had to do. So I had to rotate with my family's cars, which very helped me out very well. So I appreciate them for that. And then what happened? So then my brother's car dies. And I almost died on the highway like three times. That was fun. That was the same week, by the way. And then I ended up going to get a van, which is temporary because I'm just going to go buy a couple more cars. I decided not to buy new, and I'm just going to get three or four used cars and probably to buy a Jeep and a pickup truck. And, you know, just something like diverse, like something I can do, you know, and. So I go and get that. That's a good deal. Guy that I got it from was really cool. And then that's just started leaking coolant. So I think we're going to have to replace the radiator on it. Which the radiator is not a big deal. I can just replace that myself. And yeah. That's where we're at right now. <laughs> so I decided to change my whole life. And I was just so pissed. And I was like, you know what? I can't be depressed. I was really depressed. But I can't be depressed. Like, screw that shit. Like, I'm not bringing that down. Like, I'm not going down to that level. So, I decided to change my life up again. So, now I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning every day. Doesn't matter if I DJ. Literally, last night I got three hours of sleep. And I woke up. And now I joined this new business networking thing that I've been trying to join. And now we're going hiking. So, I'm going hiking with people. Just random people that I used to hang out with. And now I'm reconnecting with everybody and just... Living a better life. And I'm focusing more. I mean, I'm still eating shit, but what can you do? But I'm focusing more on that. And then I actually got a trainer. One of my friends, she's training me at the gym. So I go to Planet Fitness, and I got my own membership. And then she takes me to her gym, and she's actually giving me, like, real workouts. And then now I am averaging about 10 miles a day between running and, and going hiking. And nice. it's amazing. Like, for whoever... I mean, I don't even care. I don't even have that job because I got money. It's just the whole structure of it, it was what really upset me because mm -hmm. I didn't really have a reason to wake up anymore because before my life was like I woke up whenever I want, made as much money as I wanted, and but then there was no structure to it. Now that I'm waking up at 6 and, you know, holding myself accountable, it's, it's insane. Like these days seem like – like today just seems like it was three days already. Like I've done so much stuff today. Like you're so motivated in the morning and when you work out, it's like insane. And that's the insane. thing I noticed when I started with the uh, with the DDP yoga and everything else. I've got so much more energy. Like I'm at work and I'm bouncing all over the place. I've got so much more energy at night now. I'm um, actually all day long. I've got more energy, and it's just it's unreal. My cousin Brian Bosom's watching. What's up, Cuz? What up, Brian? It's great seeing you this weekend. Yeah, no, working out though, it's like I was doing good with healthy and then I got in the relationship and not to blame her or anything, but I was kind of chilling and then there was just different things in between us that caused us to not work out as well as I thought or I was hoping it would. And between that and then stress eating and then my whole weekend, my whole week is like, whoosh. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, but now I'm back in it. I'm back in the game. I got new people in my life. A lot, of, a lot more new positive people booked a lot more business and like I was surprised that I didn't like fall apart completely because I was at the edge of that um, hey but you know what you caught yourself ahead of time and knew yeah and well now like, I learned a lot of stuff so I'm gonna be single for a while but besides that like any negative person like literally like a little shy little negative thing I'm just gonna kick out like peace like I'm not about that anymore so Jim you better watch your mouth now I'm saying don't be looking at me like that. No more negativities. Keith is not even in the room. He's probably playing with his cat. Keith's in the room. Oh, there he is. What are you doing over there? Sick of your shit. He's, he's <laughs> sick of my shit. Shut up, Keith. 
That's negative. What's, what's negative is you keep on dipping your head out of frame. Your whole head disappears in the side of Jim's. I got a huge head, Keith, so if part of it's falling out, it doesn't matter. They see if it. If part of your head is falling out? Look, I'm in, I'm in it. I'm on his screen the whole time, Keith. But you're leaning over. Good night. Hey, good night. This is all and just another, just Nick. another reminder. Blocked. Coming up on Friday, oh. October 25th and October 26th, you can go back into history at the 344 year hundred, the 344 year old Leffingwell House Museum with Arrowhead Paranormal and Crossing the Veil Paranormal Societies. Nice. Join the two teams for. A group investigation, a public investigation, and you'll learn the tools used by both of our teams. There'll be three, three time slots. Okay, three time slots, three. 6 to 7.30, 8 to 9.30, and 10 to 11.30. 30 dollars for adults, 25 for ages 12 to 17. No one under the age of 12 is permitted. For reservations, email redlakenation24 at gmail.com with your name, preferred day, time slot, and number in your group. Space is limited, so reserve early. Also, tarot readings will be available by Snow Bruno of Crossing the Veil. $20 for a basic reading, $30 for a full reading. And for reservations and information, email crossingtheveilparanormal at gmail.com. That's oh. Friday, October 25th, and Saturday, October 26th. That sounds pretty exciting. Absolutely. It's always a good time. Maybe I should get my palm red. Probably be like a big F you. Look at that. Can you see those palms? <sighs> Dear I didn't swear. I said F you. No, I know. I, I, I'm not looking at your palm. Why not? I've cleaned them. Pretty sure Randy and Leah have two spots revived. Absolutely. Definitely. It's the 25th and the 26th, so reserve your spot today. So I found out some interesting information about the public access TV, about having you guys on. It doesn't matter if you drop the F-bomb. We'll bleep it. But just don't know. Can we swear right now, though? No. no. Well, like, not on purpose, but if you like accidentally fuck? slip, it happens. All right. I just slipped it in. Oh, Jesus. So public access TV, we are on public access TV, we are on FM radio, and we are on uh, FM internet radio. So we're on three platforms. Nice. Randy's palm looks like the head of a 70s basketball player. <laughs> wow. I love it. <laughs> nice. All right. So uh, I want to get into a political discussion. Okay. Political. But what I really want to know is, you know, while I was down in Virginia, we had the mass shooting at the Walmart. We had a second almost mass shooting, but the gunman was taken down by a firefighter, off-duty firefighter who had a weapon. Um, whatever's going on at the University of Louisiana right now. Chris Murphy, who can't wait to jump on these tragedies, harping on background check, background check, background check. And this is just my opinion. But a freaking background check isn't going to stop any of these mass shootings. So the, the question that I pose to you guys is, in your opinions... What will stop these mass shootings? And why can't we put people in office that can come up with an actual plan to stop these mass shootings? Oh, man, we in the Caribbean, man. So any ideas? Oh, you asking well, you I thought you were asking Facebook. I'm asking everybody while you're over there on your phone. Well, I think you still should do uh, background checks. And um, there definitely has to be regulation on it. But you never know who's going to shoot anybody. To be honest, you're never going to know who's going to shoot anybody. Maybe a cop one day is just going to start shooting a bunch of people. Who knows? But okay, but how is, a, how is a background check going to stop a well, mass shooting? like a mental, I don't know. Mental what? Mental state you, of when, when you get a background check, your 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 mental health history cannot be included because of HIPAA. 
So, again, so maybe what, they should change that then. Then you have to revise the entire um, privacy practices and everything. The reason why the red flag rules were lifted was because Bill Clinton passed the HIPAA law and the red flag legislation impeded on the HIPAA laws. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have HIPAA out there with the privacy practices where you can't say anything about anybody. If you go to a psychologist and said, yeah, I feel like blowing up something. Guess what? By HIPAA, he can't say anything to anybody. Yeah, well, I think those kind of laws should be changed. If somebody comes to you, I thought though, I thought if there was like a threat, though, that they could actually um, turn you into the police. I thought. Oh, no, and like like Randy said, I mean that's. What if we start trying to hold the people that are selling the guns a little more accountable? Okay, but how do you know who sold the gun? If if I could go to say Chicago, Miami, LA. And if I have the right amount of money, I can buy any kind of weapon on the street that I want. Fully automatic, you name it. You can buy it on the street. So I understand what you're saying and I agree that normal gun dealers, gun shops, whatnot, should be held liable. Um, it's, they need to do their due diligence when when selling a firearm. Just you're right. Um, the whole alcohol thing, the whole liability. Um, but when you can buy all of these other illegal weapons, I mean, because anything fully automatic is illegal in the United States. So when you can go, I mean, you look at the gangs out in L.A. with with Uzis and fully automatic weapons. I don't know what we can do as a nation to stop these things. It's it's a shame that all of these people are dying. And the only thing that our politicians can come up with is a background check. Criminals do not get background checks. Well, I think what it, the real problem is they don't care. Who? The government doesn't care. Of course not. Why do they care if somebody's killing people? If anything, they're probably happy about it. I, mean, I know that sounds pretty extreme, but if you think about it, I mean, one, who's selling the guns? The government is selling the guns. All the street credit, like all that stuff, where are those guns coming from? They're coming from the dealers, like the bad people, like the people that are contracted with the government to give guns. Like, that's all happening. That's real. I mean, I don't know how it's working out, but these people, what are they called? The, um, I can't remember what. I can't recall the word. But the contractors who, for example, um, design the guns for, like, the Army or, like, military contracts, mm -hmm. those guys are out selling it to third-party people. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need to have some kind of thing where it's like you can't sell it to anybody else but they can never fully stop that either because they don't know what's making you know what i mean maybe more regulations on that i don't know if there's already something in place but if you can go to a factory or manufacturer and say listen you have to keep track of how many guns you sell you have to keep track of who you sold them to and if we figure out that you're making more guns that they're going somewhere you know what i'm saying like they have to bid with the government to sell so if they kept track of how many guns they made, so if they made a billion guns and only half of a billion went out to places they sold it to, where's that other half going? You know, they're doing illegal stuff. They're selling that stuff to people. You right. know, all the cartels and are getting the guns, all the mafias, the, like everybody's the arm, getting arms the guns. Dealers. And then they're selling that off to the crazies, and they don't care who. It's the same thing as drugs. They don't care who it hurts. They're just making that money. So maybe doing something like that, but then that's why the government doesn't care because the government is the one who's selling the guns and they're making it easier for people. You know? I mean, that's a different way to look at it. I don't think about that stuff too much, but there's always that extreme way and possibility of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people think the government's on our side. They're not. Like, that is 
100% correct. Right. They don't care. If, for example, some of the stuff could be staged. You know, we don't have to go too much into that. But some of the stuff could be staged. And could be, but like, why all of a sudden people just going to get guns and shooting up a bunch of people? Like, you know, they could have been given the guns. They could have done all kinds of stuff. You know, it's it's weird that it just keeps happening. Maybe it's because they're on the news and people want to be on the news. Right. And Sarah, Sarah just brought up another good point. And there's a huge problem with people not knowing gun language and blindly spreading false information. Probably talk about me. Right. We're, 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 nah. just, we're, we're trying to throw everything out there, Randy. Um, As, what did he say? Or is that him or is that Sarah? That we're talking about a bunch of, of totally different situations. The, yeah. um I'm just showing you that you can get guns anywhere. You know, so if we, even if we made it damn near impossible for people to buy guns from a gun dealer, from a gun shop, from from wherever, legally, all they have to do is take money and for the right amount of money, go and buy anything they want. Now, as far as holding uh, regular gun shop owners responsible. I know here in Connecticut, um, they do a full FBI background check. When you uh, even if you have your permit, which I have my permit, I've got my concealed carry permit. Um, but if you want to purchase a firearm, a you have to have that permit, and then B you have to go through a second background check and I mean that's the way it should be and so I mean I can kind of understand that nationwide but that's not going to stop a mass shooting most people don't understand the term semi-automatic you're right every single gun is semi-automatic. Semi-automatic means you have to pull the trigger. And that that's semi-automatic. Um, the other thing is that an AR-15 is a weapon of war. No, no, it's not. The AR-15 has never been used by the military and is not a weapon of war. Um, AR, another thing, AR does not stand for assault rifle. It stands for armor light which is basically just the name of the weapon. Uh, it shoots a two, two, three round. And the one thing I'm, I'm, I'm against, and I know a lot of other people don't like it, but there's no reason for extended magazines. Um, extended magazines, um, no use for it. You, you don't need an extended magazine. The modification kit. Okay, you can buy a modification kit and and pretty much turn any any semi-automatic weapon, which is any weapon, into a fully automatic weapon. Okay, those I agree should be outlawed. But again, and they brought up a good point. If somebody wants to hurt somebody, they're going to do it by any means necessary. How many rounds did Timothy McVeigh shoot at the Oklahoma City bombing? None. None. Not a single one. He blew up the building. He rented a, what was it, a rider truck. Parked it outside the front of the building. And killed hundreds of people. There was no weapon involved. Now, 9-11. How many rounds were fired? None. And over, what was it, close to 5,000 people died? So, again, anybody that wants to do harm, they'll find a way. Sure, I mean, guns are the easiest accessed. Um, are they easier than trucks? I mean, how many vans have, have 
slammed into crowds of people. You're getting the same... I don't I, I, I don't want to use that word, but you're, using, you're getting the same carnage and you're not using a weapon. No, I mean, you're using the, the vehicle as a weapon. So, um, again, how do we stop any of this? I, I wish there was a, a real simple answer. I mean, I like Randy's holding people accountability, or holding people um, accountable. Um, but I just don't know. I'm trying to read what Dave wrote. So design the gun such. So the very design of Cole who made it and called it an M16. Same gun, same design. Uh, well, yes. Yes and no. Um the AR fifteen was only semi automatic. So they modified it and made it an M sixteen. Now, an M sixteen you can fire a one burst shot or you can fire a three burst shot which the three burst shot is is basically automatic um and so yes initially yes but it was modified to the m16 for uh for war um or actually used in war and you're right sarah there, there is no answer um, better mental health. I, I again, I, I I wish there was an easy answer. Um, I think the hell was that? I think our politicians really don't care. Th their answers right now are putting a band aid on an amputation. You might cure a very, very, very small part of it, but you're still going to bleed to death. Um, and did you get any updates on what's going on in Louisiana right now? No, I didn't, I didn't get anything. All right, let me see if I can find something over here. I, um... I don't know, and I mean, right now I'm open to anything. I'm 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 open to any kind of solution, but maybe it's time to vote all of these politicians out of office and get new people in there. You know, yeah, more people got to take the time to actually care about it and do do it, but. People just like complaining and they don't like putting in the work. But you know how easy it is to be into politics? Like how you can be a mayor and not even be opposed. You can be city council and not be opposed. And you can just pretty much do whatever you want. I mean, there's still restrictions, but anybody can run for this stuff. And literally, I've thought about doing it. I probably will run for city council um, next time for the new London. Unless I move somewhere else. But I was thinking about doing that city council. Be a great step up and then become mayor. What do you think about that, Jim? Be a mayor of some city. Have to stop doing drugs. No more marijuana. <laughs> we blanket everything and it's not that simple. Absolutely. Like, well, like you guys mentioned, like Sarah mentioned, I don't think there's really an answer to it. Just people have to be more aware of what's going on and people in your lives and stuff. If you see somebody acting crazy or if you think they're psychos, you know, just let people know, you know, watch out for this person. And I think with like therapy and stuff, they should have to report anything. Like if they make threats or anything like that, or if they think that they're capable of doing it, I think they should, you know, report something to the police just so they have it on record. And then maybe perhaps they can sit down and talk with them and see where their head's at. That, and that's another big thing. To see something, say something. So many people are 
are too afraid not to say something. Well, you mean too afraid to say something? Is what that, you mean? The too afraid to say something? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you can't afford that. You know that that two seconds it may take you to say something is the media. <laughs> yes. Sarah brought up a good point. There's one helpful thing that could happen is the media could shut up. <laughs> and she threw a couple colorful metaphors in there. Yeah, um glorifying these these shooters is is sickening. Absolutely sickening. You know what? If if you didn't give them their fifteen minutes of fame another thing that may may stop them you know yeah no it's yeah don't glorify them don't show their picture I, I mean I think again it's a small part but it'll help just stop and in, in the day and age of social media and everything else um, it's it's all over the place. If somebody gets stupid and they 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 uh, they put their name out there and it's all over Facebook and they show it. And that's another thing, yeah. Blaming presidents for the shootings. Um, you know, Walmart was um, Walmart was uh, Trump's fault. Sandy Hook was Obama's fault. Um, Columbine was Clinton's fault. All that, it, it, exactly. It's tearing people more apart. You know, it's it, it's like they have to point a finger at somebody. Let's 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 go right to the top and pick them. So. Well, everybody wants to blame. Nobody takes responsibility for their actions nowadays. Well, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people do not take responsibility for their actions. They blame it on their past or they blame it on people from their past. Or, you know, they just blame it on other people because they don't want to step up and take the responsibility of it. And with the shootings and stuff, nobody wants to get involved. Nobody, they just want to complain. And like I said, it goes back to the representatives and stuff. They don't really, I don't know. They use it as a poli like politics. They use it for that. And the president, is, but doesn't matter who it is, obviously is just like scapegoat for everything anyways. That's really what the president really is. He doesn't have a lot of power, which a lot of people don't know that. Um, right, he, he, can't, he, he can't do anything without Congress's that's, approval. That's what I mean. So like a lot of people think the president is doing this, president doing that. And this is every president. And like it's just somebody that they put the blame on it doesn't matter what party they are like who they are they just use that and the gun situation with walmart and stuff i don't know why people are doing it at walmart right because wasn't there like two or three of these incidents that happened um i think at least two it was at least two the second guy uh he was seen putting tactical gear on out in the parking lot uh he was seen grabbing a weapon and walking towards Walmart, the manager pulled the fire alarm, and that's when they were lucky enough to have an off-duty firefighter in there with a weapon, and he didn't even shoot him. He took him down, held him at gunpoint until the police got there. Nice. To me, this guy didn't fire a shot, so I'm wondering if he was just a mentally unstable individual who really had no intention of shooting anybody. And I don't know, was maybe looking to, for suicide by cop or whatever. I don't know. No, I think what it is is those people who prey on other people, they're scared. Right? So he thought he was in control. He was going in there. He was going to be in control. And then he was going to shoot a bunch of people. And then once this other guy pulls a gun out of him, he lost control of the situation. And then he got scared and screwed and he up gave the up. whole plan. Possible? That's pretty much it. Yeah, Not screwed up the plan. It's just. Those types of people, like bullies, if you stand up to a bully, they will back down quick as shit. Like, you know, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. So in that aspect of him walking in there, he thought he was in control and he was so powerful over people because that's how he felt. 
for whatever reason. You know, the other guy had the gun and he said, put it down. And then he did not because he didn't want to die. He wanted to take people down. Like, that's what he was trying to do. Or it's just somebody who was just pushing the law too much. Because I know everybody's fighting different laws where you can walk out in public with guns now and stuff in certain states, I believe. And you can wear armor and stuff like that. And according to the law, you can't get in trouble for that. I forgot what state that was in. But there's a couple states that have similar things like that. A lot of so states. It's, you know what I mean? And, so, and like, maybe he didn't even break... Maybe he didn't even break a law in wherever it was. I didn't look it up. I meant to, but... When I heard the story, I was like, maybe it's just one of those guys who was going out there to be like, look, the paper says I can do this. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, the local law is saying I can walk around in armor and have a gun in my hand. You know? The, it, you know what, what What drives me insane is, here, like I, like I said, I have a concealed carry permit. And here in the state of Connecticut, most of the places where there would be a mass shooting, guess what? I can't carry my weapon. Nah. So, it's kind of... Okay, yeah, you can have a permit, but you can't carry your weapon here, 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 here. You can't carry, you can't carry it in a government building. You can't carry it in a state building or a state-owned property. You can't carry it in a bar. You can't carry it near a school zone. You can't carry... There's more places where you can't carry than where you can and it's like, all right, well, you know, fish in a barrel. You know there's not going to be any armed person there. So what the hell? I mean, if you don't think where I work, I'm thinking about this all the time, you're crazy. I mean, my head is on a swivel constantly. I can't even go to a movie and enjoy a movie. Really? I without, just... I'm looking at everybody that walks in that door. Before all this crazy stuff, I always did that anyways. I always was aware of what's going on. Like, I've never experienced anything crazy, but, yeah. Like, I walk into a place, and I know where people are, and it's just probably because of my ADHD. I'm always picking up on people in the room. But I'm not looking at them like, yo, he's got a gun or anything. Like, I'm not even worrying about that. I mean, if it's my time, it's my time. But I'm not going to walk around thinking, like, oh, we're about to get blown up or about this and that. And I was actually supposed to go to Dodd Stadium. I think it was on Friday. Yeah, it was on uh, Friday. Okay. There was a bomb threat over there. You yeah, heard that? No. No, there was not a bomb threat. Uh, let me fill you that's in. That's what on, I was yeah, told from little, them. Let personally. me fill you in on that situation. I know the individual. Who made the threat? And Yeah, and it wasn't a threat. I mm. saw the comment. And there was no threat. There was no innuendo. Basically, this individual was sticking up for the Muslim community because, you know, the whole thing with the Yeah, I saw the article the, after and, I got texted. It, it says here in um, the current.com, Waterford man arrested after bomb threat to Connecticut Tigers Stadium following controversy over team's owner accusations about Muslim group. Yeah, I knew all that, but I didn't know what was said. Yeah, well, there was no threat. There was no innuendo. Um, what was they, said, though? They completely... I, I can't say right now because of uh, of the ongoing litigation. Um, but everybody's going to see soon. Uh, and if you think about it, they, they when they arrested him, they and you know they were like, he really didn't. He was charged with two misdemeanors. Somebody who calls in a bomb threat is charged with a felony. Now, because the mayor of Norwich overreacted, didn't like what was said, and said it was a bomb threat, they basically had to arrest him. But as you'll see in the upcoming weeks, it was blown out of proportion. There was no threat. There was no innuendo whatsoever. And all this person was doing was defending the Muslim community. I think I know who this guy is. And when it comes time for it, when when the truth comes out, do you think that's going to make the front page? <laughs> no, it'll probably be a little blurb on the back of the local section. I 
Oh, they don't even say what he said anyways. But I think I met him. Have I met him? I don't know. That name sounds familiar. Well, that's another reason why you don't rate stuff on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it totally. Uh, and, I mean, the story spread like wildfire. Yeah, and no, I got a text right when it happened. Yeah, me too. From the stadium. And they were like, yo. I was like, what? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm reading all this now. I didn't. Mohegan tribal police were brought down there with their bomb sniffing dogs, and everything was just completely blown out of proportion. There was never a threat made. And, uh, again, it just goes to show it's a sad state of affairs that we live in. Are you reading the article? Yeah. Nah. I'm confused. There's so many names on here, so I'm trying to read it without... Yeah, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I think the mayor right here said that the issue has been overblown and there has never been religious discrimination at Dodd Stadium. The mayor is the one that sort of overblew the whole thing. Yeah, and then it says by... Yeah, now it says by... He was the one that spotted the supposed bomb threat in the comment section reported to the police. And the officials did not share the text of the alleged threat. No, because do you realize how stupid they look right now? Uh, you know what? It's going to happen. Well. It's when, it, when it comes out, it's going to happen. Everybody's going to be like, whoa. Well, I'm sure you can sue them, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well. I don't I don't know. I, I would try, but I don't know if you can. Just think about all that resources. Yep. And that's exactly why they ended up having to, you know, they arrested him on something. Both misdemeanors. Was he even there? No. Nope. So, I mean, if you think about it, if it was an actual bomb threat, if he called it a bomb threat, it's a felony. Yeah, he would have got terrorism. It, exactly. Exactly. So, that right there should show you something. <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous. Uh, Did you hear about the guy that was impersonating a police officer in New Jersey? In New Jersey, no. Yeah, he pulled over a van. And in the van was a group of off-duty detectives that were on the way to a convention. No way. Yep. New Jersey fake cop. Hold on, it's right here. That's Keanu Reeves. I think it was on channel three. Yeah, so I guess if you're going to pretend to be a cop and pull somebody over, uh, pulling over a van to detect. There it is right there. Oh, that's awesome. Fake cop. <laughs> <laughs> Hold Idiot. on, read it over. Read something out. Oh. All right, hold on. I'll read it to you. So I wonder how they even knew he was fake. He probably just didn't know what he was doing. Police in the New York City suburbs say they have arrested a fake cop who tried to pull over real detectives. Nassau County Police say Valerie Portlock sounded a horn and flashed emergency lights Friday morning as he attempted to pull over a van in Hicksville, Long Island. The unmarked van turned out to be occupied by detectives from the department's electronic squad. Police say that once the detectives identified themselves and approached his vehicle, the 25-year-old Portluck swerved his Nissan Sentra in oncoming traffic and sped to the Long Island Expressway. Uh-huh. Police say highway patrol officers eventually pulled Portluck over and arrested him without incident. He is in custody pending arraignment Saturday on charges including criminal impersonation and reckless endangerment. Court records do not list a lawyer who could comment on his behalf. Oh, man. Can you say, dumbass? Oh, gosh. <laughs> that is funny. But what would be the point of him pulling people over anyways? <laughs> I don't know. You know, like, when is he... Unless he's, like, robbing them afterwards or something. I don't see what the point is. If you want to be a cop, just be a cop. You know how easy it is to become a um, city cop? Right. It's pretty easy. 
Oh. There's an article about a nine year old getting killed by her three dogs. That's horrible. Horrible. And then there's a Chick fil A ad. Ooh. Chick fil A, also located at the Mohegan Sun. But if you're in the Mohegan Sun, you know where you want to go? You want to go to the Lansdowne Pub, the number one spot located in the beautiful Mohegan Sun. Oh my God, what the hell is this? Man pees in sink behind Starbucks counter in on merchandise. Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania. Let's see. He's looking for a suspect. Man walked into the coffee shop at a Target store. Around 9.45 on Saturday, local police said it released a new video. He then went, or in the video, he then went behind the counter into the workers area where he urinated into a sink and onto several pieces of merchandise. Again, After doing so, the man left. Goes back to mental health. You got to be somewhat what loony to do something like that. But, and then, and, you know, you get like Joe Biden saying that there's not a mental health crisis in this country. And that a girl was caught peeing on potatoes in water, um, at Walmart in West Virginia. Soon after that, a teen in Texas was seen peeing on a shelf of wine. What the hell is wrong with these people? They, this is not mental health. This is just kids being dumbasses. Like, are they not getting arrested for this stuff? Like, yes. shouldn't they be getting, like, felonies? Um, yeah, it is a felony. That's just horrible, man. I know, we were talking about the ice cream. Didn't somebody, like, do they, something They were ice licking cream? the ice cream, yeah. That's so disgusting. If I saw somebody doing that. Yeah. I definitely would beat them. What do you got over there? You killed my daughter. Dad outraged. Girl died after being left in the van for eight hours. All right. I'm wondering who, who's he outraged at? Who left his daughter in the car? And I can't believe that's still happening. People are still leaving their kids in the car? Goes and then dying? Every day. Yeah, is, uh, every day. Those people, man. By the way, the uh, new drunken pallet has a bank vault in it with the bank vault door, but you can't lock it. So, Oh, that's wow. That's cool news. Thanks for the update. No, it, it's really cool. And, and the place is uh, slightly haunted. Well, it's so relevant to what we're talking about right now. I just wanted to bring it up. That's all. Uh, is she listening right now? Told her to call in. I don't Ooh. think she's listening. She's too busy working on a new place. Well, text Lauren her and told said his in. daughter, two-year-old Miliani Roberts and Lawrence, had been in the custody of her or in the care of her aunt and uncle. It was her aunt and uncle that left her in the car. Wow. Okay, I understand that now. I for eight hours. Eight hours. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's so sick. What do you do for eight hours that you forget a two-year-old? I don't know. I feel like these people do it on purpose, though. So. Definitely in the beginning, I think they did it on purpose because they didn't know how to react, right? Because some of them got away with it. And they called it, like, accidental deaths, and they didn't get charged. But then I think they changed the law a couple of years ago where you actually get charged for... Um, I'm trying to think what it was charged for. But they're actually held more responsible now than they were before. I don't know how the hell you can do that on purpose. Or even by accident. And they try to tell you to leave your cell phones in the background with them. Mm hmm That's sick. Yeah, because, I mean, you won't forget your, your cell phone. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. I don't get it. Yeah, society is so screwed up. All right. Apparently, the armed intruder at the Louisiana State campus um, was not found. So that's good. I mean, was unfounded, meaning there wasn't one. <laughs> yeah, let's not get that confused with. Yeah, you're in support of him not being found. 
Is that what you just said? No, I'm in support of him not being there. No such thing. Fake. Fake news. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? Summer's almost over, huh? You ready for fall? I heard uh, pumpkin spices at Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, my for God. all you people out there. Shut up. When I stopped to freaking get my coffee today, they were switching over the stuff to fall already. I'm like, yo, it's only... What's up, Anna? It's not the end. Anna Banana. Anna. Yes, I'm working tonight. Anna. That's a dumb question. I am absolutely working tonight. Um, Let's not rush the end of summer. There's pumpkin spice and fall stuff already. Yeah. yeah. Well, when's the official last day of summer? Let's see. September 21st. Last day of summer. 20th or 21st of September. Last day. September 23rd. Wow. Yeah, but really, though, for, like, going out, beaching and stuff is probably, like, end of August. No, people go... Nobody's going to the beach in September. A lot of people go to the beach in September. Nobody's going to the beach in September. Okay. A lot of people go, especially since no. It, well, unless it's a state beach, state beaches are free. No, all the time. But like Ocean Beach, after Labor Day, see, and the June, kids go back to school, you'll see a lot of people. June, July, August are considered summer. Yeah. Yeah. What, and what That's are we? What, what are we in? in? August, and then September is not listed as part of summer. The official first day of fall is September twenty-first. Yes. So what I'm saying though, that who's means going out to the beach in September? Nobody. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, quite Nobody. a few people. And are you going to the beach in September? Most people, they get their kids back to school, or um, they leave them in the car. They're looking for something to do during the day, and they go to the beach. It, especially Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach has a lot of people after September 1st because it's free. Yeah, but I don't think I've ever went to the beach in September. Uh, and how many times have you gone to the beach this year already? None. <laughs> Thank you. Well, besides Ocean Beach. But I didn't go in the water. I haven't been in the water. Hey, uh, I did, went did swimming, you? though, at least for the first time in forever. Did you? Yeah. Part of the perks of dating. Did you see they caught a thresher shark in the uh, Thames River? Nope. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. What kind of shark is that? It's a shark. Does it matter? It's a thresher shark. Thresher sharks have the long tail that they use to whip their prey. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, it was a good size one too. They're they're following the um, the food up the river, like the seals and everything. You know, they they seal lions. They've been showing up in uh, in Norwich at the the, the pier. Really, the sea lions up there? Yeah. Yeah. So they've been following one of them up. And then uh, sharks have been coming right up the Thames River now. Really? I mm -hmm. didn't know that. Then I got my great white tracker, and oh my God. I had some great whites popping up, like right outside of the Squamicket and all over the place. Maybe they're taking over the water. Hey, John Rainey's back. What is he doing? I don't know. What are you laughing at, John? The sharks or what? His boyfriend. Anna, are you working? She didn't answer us, huh? Yeah. No, she's probably she, just she on for a minute. She asked a question and then just, like, disappeared. Yeah, but that comment was probably old. Oh, maybe. Did you ever invite her back or no? Yeah. You never yeah. invited her back? She's never here? Well, she was here, like, twice. Twice. Yep. Twice. 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 We already well, know Anna wants to know. <laughs> He's a little late on that guy. We already know, <laughs> Keith. Get Thanks, back in Keith. the closet, Keith. Back in the closet. <laughs> so, yeah, what I forgot to mention earlier is don't forget on uh, Thursday night, starting at 9.30, karaoke at the Lansdowne Pub. Yeah, yes, it's a good time. That's it. Let's get some people out there. 9.30. Let's get ready for our big Halloween extravaganza. Yeah, we got to come up with a party. I got to talk to Carlos. We'll Absolutely. be out there DJing that, so we should probably do hey, like an awesome what? contest. And we can make that our Scares at Care charity event. Yeah. Halloween night. At Work the that Lansdown in. Down Pub. Hell Work yeah. that out. Absolutely. What, do we, what would we do? Costume we to charge contest. Uh, I mean, even if we just charge like 10 bucks to go in. 
No, I don't think anybody's paying ten to come in. Five, five bucks, two dollars. Well, maybe they don't. Maybe we just put we pay a, them a dollar. We pay. we do <laughs> raffles. Why not? We can do basket raffles. Get local places to donate gift cards. Be free to come in, but you pay for that, and then that money, the proceeds go to scares I cares. All right? Are you just uh, yeah? You can uh, you put a donation thing up front, and people can donate. Or we can do that too. Yeah. Sounds got sounds interesting. Yeah. Make it like an official thing. It just it, ask Carlos if we can do it. And we just do. Well, we'll have to talk to him Thursday when you're there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, be uh, Halloween night extravaganza at the Lansdowne Pub. We can raffle off John for a night. I don't know. Is he fun, though? John, you a fun guy? <laughs> James is looking for a date, John. Are you a fun guy? <laughs> Are you a fun guy, John? Are you a fun guy? Are you a funny I'm guy? Funny. Huh? Are you funny? Funny like a clown, huh? Real funny. Okay, 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 okay. He's funny like a clown. Do I amuse you? Yes. Yes, that was like you the worst guy? impression ever. That's because my voice is gone. Most of my impressions are worst really good. Worst impression ever. Well, not now you got me talking like Sean Connery. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the rock. Crack rock. Crack. Crack, crack. Crack, crack, crack. Can we say crack? Crack. Crack. Crack kills. Crack. Crack. All right. Increasing humidity starting tomorrow. No. Ooh, no. Yay. Gross. I couldn't even sleep tonight, yesterday, whatever day it was. Oh, it was I couldn't even sleep. Yeah, it was pretty. It was. Could it, not even sleep. It didn't feel that bad out there today. So we go from ridiculously humid to a nice day back to ridiculously humid. I have air conditioning. I can give a shit. Yeah, but the AC doesn't work. AC works here. Watch Hill work is where it's at, though. Yeah, that's where the uh, Mako Shark capital of the world is. Watch Hill, Rhode Island. 45% humidity, huh? Let's see. That's 62. right now? Two, holy sh... Yeah, 45 oh right God, now. 45 is nothing. That's 62 beautiful. at 8 o'clock. 74. There it is. Around 9. 81 at 2 a.m. 90 what? at 5 a.m. Holy shit. I don't think I'm going. What are you talking tomorrow. about? I'm looking at the I'm looking at the weather right here. Look. Oh. 90% humid. The 90% humidity means it's 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 pouring. <laughs> are you reading this right now? <laughs> are, we, are we talking about you, the, Are you uh, looking at this right now? What? Am I looking at what? Look. This is not this is not what it says. 90%. Yeah, 90% humidity means it's raining. Well, does it look like it's raining in this picture? Dude, no. 90% humidity means it's raining. If you have a, a 100% humidity, it's pouring. You can't have 90. Do you realize what 90% humidity is? Okay, hold on. I'm do you know what relative up. humidity is? I'm looking it up. That's when the sweat from, never mind. From your balls. <laughs> Runs down the back of your sister-in-law's leg. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hold on, though. You're a liar. <laughs> you are a liar. It doesn't say anything about rain. Oppressive. Uh, all not. Oppressive. Science. How it works. Look at this. Okay. Oppressive dew point humidity is, is mid yeah. 70s. Mid to upper 70s is oppressive humidity. It says creating the possibility of rain at 100%. Possibility, wow. not that it's going to happen. Let's see. He's a freaking fart smeller over here. Look at that. See, because you don't know nothing, bro. It just says that there's water in the air. Water vapor <laughs> cannot hold anymore, creating the possibility. Possibility. So getting back to Randy. Oh, Randy, rain. when are you gonna do the uh, buffalo the mozzarella? Buff and, the yeah, buffalo see, mozzarella stick. See, I got you on your BS, and you just change the subject. You give me a BS, just like girls. You catch them in a lie, and they just go around it, and they're like, yo, we're talking about muffled mac and cheese. And nope, I already told you. Sticks, that you're wrong. I just showed yeah, you. I'm not wrong. I'm absolutely right. No, you're not. It does not say rain. It says sweat will not evaporate into the air. The hotter <laughs> the air, the more water it contains. Yes, that is correct. 
but it's not a guarantee that it's going to rain. Yeah, but anything over 75, the upper 70 humidity is oppressive. You don't get much more over seven. The but that's not, what we're, that's not what we're debating, though. You said you're not going to have ninety percent humidity said it was without be rain. rain. I don't know. Why don't we make a bet? What do you want to bet? Why don't we make a bet? What? What do you want to bet? Because none of this. It doesn't say it's raining at all. Oh my god! This is partly cloudy. Yeah, then you're not going to have ninety percent humidity. You can't have ninety percent humidity without rain. See, now you're changing up what you just said. No, I just said you can't. See, now it's going to rain at 82. Oh, Scattered. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's 90 for like hours and there's no rain. So, I don't know how you explain that one. You can't. It's wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. wrong. You are wrong, Jim. I caught you in a lie. Nope. I caught you in a lie. Look, even on the radar, there's no rain. Well, that's fine. Then you can't have 90% humidity. Well, then I don't know why they would put that on weather.com. I don't know why they put it on there it's either. It's the weather channel. Can't. Yeah, at 100. That's not what we were debating. At 100%. Yeah, that's not what we were fighting about. <laughs> Two drunk uncles. Who said that? Randy. Oh, come sit on my lap, Randy. Randy's Tell me your stories. <laughs> Randy, there's something seriously wrong with him. <laughs> now it's just entertainment. Seriously. And I'm really tired, and we got nothing else to talk about. You have nothing else to talk about. Okay, talk. You never have anything to talk about. Other than, I just oh, talked all about my crazy poor me, shit. Poor me, poor no, me. No, I was not doing me. it for satisfaction. <laughs> I was doing it just to get it off my chest because it's been a crazy ass life. Thug life, baby. But I'm rising to the Thug. top. I'm going to have like three cars soon. Shit. Are you going to hit the lottery? No, I have money. That's not the issue. It was just all the timing. That was pretty much it. Just the timing. Everything just happened so quick. I got money. I'm about to go on vacation. I'm about to go on a cruise. I'm probably going to Greece. You know, that was something that I talked to my ex-girlfriend about. That sounded pretty cool. I might just go there by myself. Let's say F it. Send her some pictures in the mail. Maybe send her a postcard. Why would you go to Greece? Why not? Have you not seen how amazingly awesome it is? That's the uncle I was referring to. <laughs> oh, the one that he sits on the lap. Gross. Well, next week we are going to have our NFL kickoff prediction show. And I predict that the New York Giants will have a better record than the Green Bay Packers. I predict no way. that Ezekiel Elliott will not play football this year. I predict that his replacement, who I watched the other night, will have an amazing season. And you will probably see Ezekiel Elliott either traded or just left on the bench. I predict. I predict that the New England Patriots Suck. will go to another Super Bowl. No, they won't. And. 20 bucks right now says that I'm in the Super Bowl. The. NFC representative is going to be Cowboys. Yeah, okay. Probably New Orleans Saints. I think it's going to come down to New Orleans and and the Rams again. And New Orleans is still, and rightly so, New Orleans is very pissed off about what happened to him last year. And that was one of the most blatantly missed calls. I almost want to say, I want to say it was done on purpose. It was so bad. Um, and that call cost them a, a, a trip to the Super Bowl. So I think New Orleans has something to prove, and New Orleans will, New Orleans will, uh, barring any injuries, New Orleans will represent the NFC 
Why don't you pull up that last that last play that you're talking about? Put it on there so they can see it. Um. Yeah, if I can. Yeah, just go to YouTube. Rams versus the Saints. Copyright material. No. Who cares about copyright? Blah blah blah. F the government. It's uh. <laughs> One of the, one of the most ridiculous plays you're ever gonna see. Yeah, no, I um, saw it. But I'm trying to remember. But if we show the listeners, they can see if they didn't watch the game. I thought it was pretty funny. But you know what happened is they just called the game real quick, and then they couldn't do anything about it. And then people said they should have played another game, but that's not gonna happen. All the work and all the stuff that they have to put together for it. Yeah, that that was never gonna happen. All right. Here we go. And as you will see, it is without a doubt. Oh, they're not seeing it because you didn't project it. Project it. All right. They're going to show it again. Yeah, they're going to show it again. Just bear with it. Um... If you look at that right there, I mean, he is there a good <laughs> Jesus. Ah, look at his face. Look, look how quick he's in. Look at, look at the ball's not even there yet. Boom! Now the ball's there. Wow! Just uh, one of the most most horrible missed calls I've ever seen. And you see where the 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 play should have been. They're down by the oh. goal line. A field goal would have won the game for him. <laughs> he just nailed. And, I oh. mean, clearly. It's helmet hit, too, did not it? Oh, absolutely. It clearly helmet, helmet. pass interference. And, and you can't blame Sean for, Sean Payton for, for freaking out because it was just, I mean, this is the NFC championship game. You can't make those kind of calls. Or miss those kind of calls in this in this type of game. That cost Damn. the New Orleans Saints a trip to the Super Bowl. And hopefully now you can... Uh, you yeah, can, see there was head-to-head -head contact right there, helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. Mm -hmm. You well, actually, can now no. challenge pass interference plays because of that call. So we'll, we'll see. I haven't seen one called yet in the... In the uh, preseason, I haven't watched a preseason game. I've tried. Um, I'm usually at work, so I mean, I, I catch some. The new quarterback for the Giants, uh, what's his name? Daniel Jones. He looks pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Eli didn't like that. He was sitting there watching. No, Eli looked pretty good too. Yeah, he but then he always he can't play in games. Though he sucks. I think it's the pressure. I don't think he can handle it. Um, no, he's had no offensive line and took a beating over the last few years. Eli's a, he's definitely a Hall of Fame quarterback, two-time Super Bowl you MVP. You really think so? Absolutely. He's a two-time Super Bowl MVP. He holds multiple NFL records in in passing. Absolutely. Man. I think he's washed up, but he just hasn't had the uh he hasn't had the line. He, he he was hit more times than any quarterback in the history of the NFL over the last three years. Wow. And when you don't have an offensive line, that's what's going to happen. Yes, I am the guy that talks to ghosts. And you know what they tell me? They tell me that Green Bay is going to have a worse record than the Giants. <laughs> what's yeah. up, Lori? What is she saying? Send pictures in the mail or the mall? What did she say? Why send pictures in the mail? Did you send her pictures in the mail? She's talking about your pictures or my pictures? I didn't send any pictures in the mail. Mm, I didn't send her any pictures in the mail. What kind of pictures you send in there, James? No, I didn't send nothing. Maybe she's on the wrong post. I don't mm. know. I don't know. I don't know I don't what know. kind of pictures you've been sending. Dun, dun, dun. Do you think I'd pay 45 cents to get it mailed to somebody? No. Yeah, because once you put it on the internet, it's on the internet. So if you, even if you sent it by your phone, you know, if you're sexting on your phone, it's still out there. Oh, yeah, so, I know that. Yeah. I don't sex. I don't even have sex. I don't even know what that is anymore. 
right. Well, I don't even our, know what that is. That is our show for this week. I, it's great to be back. A little rusty, but... Yeah, you sucked. Yeah. Next week, I'll be back <laughs> with my new co-host. That's good. Or my old co-host. Yeah, we'll see anyway, if she shows up. We'll bet money on that, too. Until next week, be safe. Take care of each other. And, Peace. Uh, Don't peace do out. drugs.